Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. My name is Amata and I hope you're having an amazing day. Paul is having some well-deserved time off today, so it's down to yours truly to discuss everything going on in the tech world and we have quite an exciting day, my friends. Of course, just the other day, we finally had the reveal of RTX 40 from NVIDIA where they unveiled the RTX 40 series, well, at least some of it. We, of course, saw the RTX 4090 and the two variants of the RTX 4080, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm sure you've already seen the event and our video, and if you haven't, you can, of course, find it on our channel. But then we have some official benchmarks with Hatch, which have been shared today thanks to WCCF Tech. Now, of course, NVIDIA did discuss the performance of the RTX 4090 at the event, but they only use vague reference points, and during a closed doors presentations, NVIDIA shared the first concrete performance numbers for the 4090 with actual FPS numbers, which is great, obviously. It's great to get, you know, an idea of the performance, but actual hard numbers is always better, obviously. So before I get into the benchmarks, just want to obviously cover the red tape of what setup was used. It was a 12900K with 32 gigs of RAM running on Windows 11, and all of the tests were based on 4K res with DLSS set on performance mode and they were made in games that support DLSS 3. Of course, NVIDIA are very proud of their new technology, or their new improvement to their technology, I should say. So we have it broken down into today's games and tomorrow's games. Let's go with today's. As you can see, Microsoft Flight Sim, 103 FPS, Warhammer 40k, Dark Tide, 138. The Unreal Engine 5 Lyra demo, 155, uh, that's with RT. F122 with RT is 204. And then Unity Enemies demo, uh, again with RT, is 89. And then Cyberpunk, again with RT, is 141. Now, I'm sure you'll notice that Cyberpunk is also in tomorrow's games as well. And that's because of the new edition of Overdrive mode. And we'll put a pin in that for a moment because that's going to come up in my explanation of what these performance numbers actually mean. So, for tomorrow's games, we have Cyberpunk 2077, 90 FPS again in that Max RT Overdrive mode, and then Racer RTX, which of course NVIDIA did show off at the Beyond GeForce event, again with full RT, 80 FPS, Justice with full RT, 81, and then Portal RTX with full RT is 117. So the reason that Overdrive mode is important, it's basically an update that's coming to the game, which is going to add more complex RT calculations. And the performance gains, which we'll get to in a moment, are more significant in games that support more advanced ray tracing implementations. So again, I feel like that's why it's important that we have the Cyberpunk before and after of Overdrive Max RT and then not Max RT uh, vanilla Cyberpunk, I guess you could call it. So just to put those numbers in some sort of context, because you know context obviously is important with these sort of things, we see a uh, 2x performance boost from Microsoft Flight Sim and Warhammer 40k. Uh, but the UE5 demo and F1 aren't too far off from a 3x, and the Unity demo and the tw Cyberpunk 2077 are close to 4x increases. And then, of course, with the other Tomorrow's games, we see some fairly significant performance improvements. Racer RTX 4.5x, Justice is almost 5x, and Portable RTX, again, isn't that f a far cry from a 6x performance boost. Now, obviously, NVIDIA did unveil during their event that they have made several hardware additions made specifically to optimize ray tracing on the RTX 40 architecture. The first and foremost of those is obviously that shader execution reordering, which basically is a new stage in the ray tracing pipeline, which makes it more efficient. Of course, NVIDIA did explain this in much more detail in their event, so if you did miss it, I highly recommend you go and watch it because they go through the technology and it looks really interesting as NVIDIA claim that shader execution reordering boosts Cyberpunk 2077 44%, Portal RTX 29% and Racer RTX 20%. Now, of course, shader execution reordering was not the only new technology they brought to the table, but I don't want to basically discuss the event again because we already did that. Anyway... <laughs> I'm curious as to what you guys thought to the RTX 40 event. A lot of people seem to have some very strong opinions on it, let's just put it that way, so I'm curious to see what you guys think so far of the RTX 40 series. Of course, we haven't seen the 4070 or any of the lower end cards yet, so obviously there's still more to come. And of course, we've got AMD's RDNA 3 event coming in November, which I cannot wait for. Really excited to see what they have in store and to finally get some official performance numbers for that as well. Anyway, speaking of AMD, let's move very swiftly on to the Ryzen 7950X, as there has been a pre-review, not a preview, a pre-review of the Zenfold processor, again, the 7950X um, 
on the Sysoft Sandra website, or Sys Software to be more exact. This is a collection of results from other reviewers. This is not a review that Sysoft, uh, Sys Software, excuse me, have done themselves. They've collected various results from the you know, 1100K, 1550X, and of course 1200K, and, and obviously the star of our show today, the 7950X. And it gives us a early performance review, again, in Sys Software. Now I'm not going to go through all of the benchmarks here because there's quite a bit to go through but you can see them yourself on screen and I'm just going to go through the percentage numbers of how much performance increase we actually see here and arithmetic is 42% higher performance in legacy integer, 30% higher in floating point operations. In the SIMD vectorized test, Zen 4 is 60% faster than Zen 3. And then the aggregated CPU score was 27,310 points, which is 73% better than that of Zen 3. Now, there is way more than I've just discussed there. There is a full pre-review, as I said. There is a link in the description below this video. I highly recommend that you go and give it a read. They go pretty damn in-depth into the 7750X. So if you're perhaps thinking of upgrading to Zen 4 this generation, go give it a read. But I will give you this snippet from their article, which basically they call the 7950X a 10 out of 10. Summary, a powerhouse of a CPU, 10 out of 10. However, both due to increased clocks and core improvements, even legacy code files, all code is between 40 to 100% 2x faster than Zen 3, and thus also beats Intel's very top processor of Alder Lake into dust with AVX 512 inspections. The improvement is even larger, 2.5x. There is nothing the CPU cannot handle, but then again, this is the top end 16 core 32 thread version. Price wise, if we're talking the top end, this is 13% launch price cheaper, ending up 2x better value. And the previous top of range, 5950X, which is great value for money. Intel will have to reduce prices quite drastically to compete. Very strong words from Sys Software. I'm sure you will agree. Now, again, that was just a brief overview of everything they discussed on the Sys Software website. I will include the link in the description below this video, as always, of course. Go give it a check because I have only skimmed the surface of everything. They've even got price efficiency, per versus cost, and CPU power, power efficiency, all sorts of interesting stuff that is definitely worth a bit of a read. But we're going to finish up now with a couple of things for RDNA 3. Just a couple of updates. The first thing is that we have a tweet from Grayman, which basically states that... We, all, of course, are going to be seeing the reveal of RDNA 3 on November 3rd in um, NVIDIA. AMD have already confirmed that, but then they said that it will be on the market about three weeks later. So that's what they're claiming, that November 3rd is going to be the announcement, and then the release date is three weeks after that. Now, one thing I just want to add in here is the wording from AMD's tweet, which was from Scott Halcom and exactly was, join us on November 3rd as we launch RDNA 3 to the world. More details to come soon. Now, you would think that launch would mean that, hey, we do the conference and then it's available, but it is definitely ambiguous as to what that means. So I guess we'll find out. I hope that Grayman is incorrect here because that gives NVIDIA an insane lead, but obviously we, we did have a gap with RDNA 2 and RTX 30 as well, so it wouldn't be the first time. And then they also said that Navi 31 is in November, and then the mobile version of Navi 33 will debut at CES on January the 4th, and they think that the desktop version of Navi 33 will be around the same time, or maybe a smidge earlier. And of course, this pretty much lines up with what we've been saying, of course. Paul has said numerous times that the desktop version of N33 is early next year, and it was delayed from late this year. As I said, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what AMD have in store for us with RDNA 3. There's been so much discussion, rumours, leaks, and so on about it. So I'm just very excited to see Lisa 2 take the stage and finally get to see what it has in store for us. I hope it's as competitive as all the rumours have been saying, because I think that's what really we could all use at the moment. Anyway, that's me done for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a pleasant weekend, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.